Good morning, friend. It's Zorro here from Bayside. Today I want to talk to you about one of my favorite all-time movies, and perhaps you've seen it too. It's called Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Now, if you haven't seen it, I encourage you to go see it, but please see the 1971 version with Gene Wilder, not the one with Johnny Depp. It was terrible. But anyway, if you remember the story, it closely relates to the heart of God, and that's why the movie touches me so much. In the movie, we have Willy Wonka, who's the owner of this extravagant chocolate factory. He's a very eccentric man, but he's looking for a, a kid of a pure heart that he can entrust his chocolate factory to. So he takes all these kids through this contest and they have to fill out some paperwork and say that they're not gonna break any of the rules. And of course, as you know the movie, if you remember, all the kids break all the rules and they get disqualified. At the very end of the movie is the most touching part and it's the part that always touches my heart and makes me well up at the end. So Charlie Bucket, the last kid, He's tested and he's disqualified, but his grandfather goes up to Wonka and says, what about the chocolate that you promised Charlie? And he goes, you know, you did all this and you did this and you're disqualified, he sends them out. So they're broken hearted. Charlie's at the door, ready to walk out. His grandfather's trying to coax him to take the everlasting gobstopper, which is this coveted candy that Wonka invented. And, and, and he is tempted to take it with him because earlier in the film, if you remember, this man Slugworth comes up to them and tries to tempt every kid. If you bring me one of those gobstoppers, I'll give you a lot of money. So Charlie's tempted to go out the door. It's one of those pure moments of the heart, right? But he has a change of heart at the last second and he walks back to Wonka's desk and he pauses and he takes something out, which is the gobstopper, and he sets it to his desk and he goes, here, Mr. Wonka. So check out this scene and you'll see what I'm talking about. Mr. Wonka? So shines a good deed in a weary world. Charlie. My boy. You won! You did it! You did it! I knew you would! I just knew you would! Oh, Charlie, forgive me for putting you through this. Please forgive me. Come in, Mr. Wilkinson. Charlie, meet Mr. Wilkinson. Pleasure. Slugworth! No, no, that's not Slugworth. He works for me. For you? I had to test you, Charlie, and you passed the test. You won! Okay, so now if you were watching that and your heart is open, you can see why that movie touches me so much and why it should touch you. Because it conveys so beautifully in a Hollywood way the heart of God. Wonka is like a God archetype. He's looking for a pure-hearted kid to entrust with his kingdom. But isn't that the same thing God is looking for? God is looking for those that he can entrust with his kingdom to reign and rule with Christ. And what does he do? He allows temptation to exist in this earth so we can be tested, so our hearts can be purified, to see who's worthy to reign and rule with him because he wants to give you the kingdom, which is like the chocolate factory. So Luke 16.10, in the NIV says, whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. And Jesus said in the Beatitudes in Matthew 5, 8, blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. So remember my friends, the key is to keep a pure heart through all the temptations, all the setbacks, all the disappointments, because they're all there. The key is to remain faithful to the very end and guard your heart. And one of my favorite scriptures is Proverbs 4.23, which says, above all else, guard your heart, for from it springs forth all of the issues of life. Guard your heart, my friends, and have a great day.